The thing is, I would literally kill to have today's YouTube back when I was 15 because you can not only learn how to do anything, but what specifically to do. Now, that being said, there's a lot more landmines, people misleading you, people with flashy, great editing, cars, women, and they're telling you that their business model is the best. You know, needless to say, they're usually selling something. The hardest part now is honestly just choosing who to listen to, who to trust, and which path to follow. And in this video, I'm gonna make a case for why I think coding is still the holy grail skill for young people in 2023, and why if I was 15 again, I would do everything 100% the same way. I'm gonna give you 10 reasons, let's get started. And reason number one is you don't need a college degree to do it no four years no massive amount of debt that starts as 50k and with interest rates goes to 100 150 yeah you can just avoid that whole thing and not just that but you can start your career four years earlier than your classmates okay you're gonna miss some partying you're gonna miss some fun but more and more nowadays people are choosing to skip college and i think if tech is something you're trying to get into you can learn the computer science stuff on your own later you can buy the same textbooks take the college courses online and just skip the whole thing Reason number two is you can learn coding online and if you're really dedicated, you can actually do it for free. Just here on YouTube, there's tons and tons of free tutorials, free resources. Now, of course, you can just learn for free on YouTube. What do you learn though? There's a ton of roadmaps out there. I personally think something more structured is better. Some people recommend Harvard CS50, it's very difficult. I'd put it more at intermediate. But if you had to ask me the best place to start, I would recommend Course Careers. It's completely free and the intro is taught by my friend Tim, one of the best guys on YouTube. I'll leave a link below. You can sign up for free. Check it out. See if it's a good fit for you. Reason number three, it is also the fastest career to earning 100K per year. Now that's the milestone that's a lot of people's goal in their 20s, so hitting that six figures. But what if you could do it literally right out of high school? And I'm not saying that's easy. You can only earn it in certain cities such as San Francisco, New York, but I do know people who have done this straight out of high school. It is possible. So theoretically, you can be earning 100K at 18 plus stock bonuses. And then by the time you're 20, 21, you can build that all the way up to even four or 500K, assuming you're at a top tech company. Now, I don't want to inflate the numbers. I'm not saying that's the average, but even the average results for a senior developer that's with three to five years of experience, you know, they're going to be earning between 150 to 250 on average. I'm not throwing out your numbers that you hear this is what you can realistically expect and that brings us to number four which is it is the highest probability chance for high income now you see other people on youtube they're throwing out big numbers so maybe this video you're bored you're about to click away it's hard to get excited but what they don't tell you is let's say you want to start an ad agency a drop shipping store or similar your chances of success based on the number of people that start that are between one and five percent and if you don't believe me join one of these courses go in the face Facebook group or the Discord and just see how many people are actually succeeding compared to the number of people in there. Now, it's not that hard to do the math. And the thing is, if you spend, let's say, one to two years trying to learn marketing, your plan B is not very good if you're not getting results. But on the other hand, let's say you try to build an app. Well, you built an app, it didn't take off, but you still know coding to a really good level and you can easily just switch into a 100K, 200K job after that. Now, if you're still set on doing ad agency, drop shipping, trading, or whatever it is, I wish you good luck. So my point is for people who are realistic, people who like to have a good plan B, you know, this is a great option. But let's talk about actually getting rich too, because who doesn't want the Bugatti? I'm gonna make a case too that coding is the best for what we call outlier income too. That is becoming the richest person that you know. Specifically as an entrepreneur, making that one mil a year, selling that company for a hundred million, and let's just say there's a reason that your favorite guru is probably trying to get into software now too. The reason for this is software businesses in particular are extremely scalable. Think of selling a physical product like this monitor. You have to manufacture the monitor, you're paying for that. Then you have all these fixed costs, such as the rent for the store, the salesperson, and that can really cut into how much you're making per unit you sell. Before I lose you, just wanna say, there's really none of that with software. Once you have it built, getting an additional customer is generally gonna be almost pure profit and that's what we call a high profit margin this leads to on one hand the cash flow being really good that's you being able to keep a lot of money that you make and it's also why software companies sell for the best multiple and that's how you make the hundred million when a company gets purchased these software companies command the highest valuations number six though is 
something interesting because a lot of people these days are saying you can be a tech entrepreneur, you can get into software without knowing coding. So maybe you think you can just skip this step. Now there's a couple problems with that. So first things first, if you don't know how to code, you gotta pay someone to build it. But okay, fine. Let's say you do have 100, 200K laying around to build a product. How are you gonna know if your coders, if your development agency is doing a good job or just wasting your money? It's pretty much impossible. Now you might also say you can just partner with someone who knows coding. Well, in that case, what exactly are you gonna be bringing to the table? Let's just say there's a reason the number one startup accelerator, Y Combinator, ideally looks for two technical co-founders. Now, I won't get into the horror stories either of development agencies taking someone's money, writing terrible code or anything like that, but I think it's fair to say if you are building a business based around code, it's probably best to know what's going on. Number seven, kind of a funny one, coding is the best skill for nerds. To be fair, maybe you're an extreme extrovert, always talking to strangers, love being on the phone, but chances are, you're on YouTube right now on a Saturday night. Come on, that's probably not you. Now, if that is you, okay, go ahead, do sales, and you could kill it by being on the phone all day. But if on the other hand, you're someone like me, you grew up gaming, spending time in front of the screen, competing, solving problems, or even playing games where you build systems like Factorio, Civilization, and other strategy-based games, you're actually at a head start in the software game because, you know, this is debatable, but I do think these skills transfer, and people who are gamers have a better starting point than people who aren't. And there's also a higher chance they're gonna end up liking it. Number eight, is gonna be your remote travel options. Okay, doctors make a lot of money, but you have to physically be there all the time. More and more people are doing the digital nomad thing, the remote thing. Even if you're not using that year round, to have that option, trust me, is amazing because I've lived all over the world. Now this is something for sure you wanna be factoring in because even having those two days guaranteed to work from home, which is more the standard nowadays, that makes a big, big difference. Reason number nine is called lateral systems thinking. The truth is, even if you learn coding and never use it, this is gonna sound crazy, but it's still a good skill to learn because of what's called systems thinking. When you learn how to build software systems, it's kind of weird, but you start seeing the world a little bit like the matrix where everything starts to seem like a system, whether it's your dating life, the business you're trying to start, or the world itself. Now for dating, if you build an efficient product and a great system, you can basically meet a lot of people you'd want to date. But if you never design it or organize it, things are going to be pretty random for you and maybe not the best. With your business, it's all about fitting people pieces together and automating things so you don't have to be at the center of it and that's how you scale up. You hire people to fill a certain role. If something breaks, you go in and fix it. It's very similar to software. And the world itself and all its moving pieces is what you call a complex system. It's something that's very hard to model but you still have to interact with it to get the results that you want. This is kind of like a huge code base where you don't fully understand it but you still have to make changes. And I don't think it's a coincidence that some of the most successful people these days, they started out or at least learned how to code. They don't code any anymore, but they're absolutely killing it. The last reason is it's just pretty fun. I've had the jobs where you sit there and you're watching the clock. Coding is a lot of things, but it's not that. You get to be at companies with some of the best perks, working around the smartest people, and you're building stuff millions of people are using instead of just doing a spreadsheet for your boss. A lot of people look at meaning in their work kind of in a selfish way, like what do I want to do? But I encourage you to look at it this way. If your life sounds great, if you're building something really useful, that's kind of fulfilling in a non-selfish way that feels really good. Anyway, those are my 10 reasons why software is still the holy grail skill for young people. And I hope you'll consider to learn and maybe stick around my channel if you like videos like this. Anyway, see you next time.